Greetings everyone, this is First Antonian 753 with an episode of the game Political Machine 2012. This scenario will include a possible future election, but it is 2012, so it's what would have happened in the past. It's between the former First Lady during the 1990s, uh, a woman who has served as Secretary of State, who has used her personal email for national security issues, and uh, she's currently in mid-August of 2015, leading in the polls for the Democratic primary for the presidential election of 2016. She will be facing a Republican candidate who has declared bankruptcy four times. Who? <laughs> that's just a funny image of him. Um, who has uh, amassed large amounts of wealth in his life? He has no commitment to political action committees or anyone who needs to, who politicians need to impress to raise money from. According to this, he has a lot of stamina and not as much fundraising ability. I would think he should probably start off with more money than that, but he's got pretty good money. He was the producer of The Apprentice and is famous for firing people on national television. And he, somehow, is leading the Republican primary polls to be the Republican candidate for the 2016 election. Clinton versus Trump. What a <laughs> battle. I'm actually playing as Hillary Clinton. This is 21 weeks out of the election. So this would be... And it's a, it's a 2012 election. I just want to make it clear. So we're dealing with 2012 issues. Um, political Machine is a presidential election game. And to get elected president... You do not need the popular vote, for those of you who don't know, who aren't aware. You need the Electoral College. The Electoral College is made up of 538 delegates from the states, equal to the amount of congressmen each state has, plus Washington, D.C. gets an additional three, which actually I don't think are involved in this game. So we'll be trying to get the majority of 535 delegates. Um... To do that, we need to win their opinion. 54% are currently in favor of Miss Clinton in New York. And, that, and for the 2012 election, she was registered for New York because she was a senator of New York prior to that. 35% approves Donald Trump. 11% are undecided. This is the winning factor. Now... When you are campaigning for president, there are certain states that typically always vote for the Democrats. They are called blue states, and then there are usually votes that always vote for the Republicans. They are called red states, and then there are some states that are in between. They are called swing states, okay? Now, looking at this map, you have the blue states are the ones who are basically in favor of Ms. Clinton right now, and the red states are the ones who are in favor of Mr. Trump. However, the gray st there's a lot of gray states here, and I wouldn't say there's all these swing states. Big swing states that you have to consider as you're running as president are Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida, possibly Michigan, a lot of uh, Midwestern states. Illinois usually goes to the Democrats because of Chicago, but it could swing. Missouri is a possible swing state. Virginia is a possible swing state. There's a lot of people living around the urban area of Washington, usually states that have very large cities and very large rural populations will be swing states because the rural population tends to vote more conservatively and sides with the Republicans on their issues and the blue states tend to vote more liberally and will side with people who live in cities because they are more dependent on the government while people in rural states are much more independent and self-sufficient. Now, when running for president, there are, not only are there the electoral college you have to consider, but you also have to consider money, because you need money to advertise. Now, the electoral college 
they do direct, they do elect the president directly, and the popular vote does not have any direct effect on the presidential election. However, typically the electors will vote according to what the population within their state have voted for. Certain states have more votes than others. California, well, New York, we say, has 29. California, which is a big Democratic state, has 55. Texas, which is a big Republican state, has 38. The Republicans typically carry the Midwest, and a lot of times they get a lot of the South. Democrats, we usually take the Northeast, and parts of the West Coast, Oregon, could possibly flip. That's usually how things are laid out. And it's because of the issues in each state. There are certain things that the people care about. 36% of the vote, according to this game in 2012, 36% of the voters in Ohio would favor liberal issues. 37 would favor Republicans, and 27 are undivided. This is what makes it such a swing state. Now, there are certain issues that each state will tell you right off the bat that are major issues. Tax cuts, which liberal Democratic voters do not like, but conservative Republican voters do approve of. Reducing unemployment, which basically everyone is in favor of more jobs. Um, this does bring over some of the middle class, or the middle undecided voters. Auto bailouts. It is Ohio, so there are probably some people here that are working in the car industry or have interest in the car industry because it's near Michigan and it's near those factory areas such as Cleveland, possibly Cincinnati. Deficit uh, reduction. Everyone seems to be in favor of that. And then fire, fire Big Bird. Okay. I'm not sure what this issue is about. Fire big word. Conservatives see public broadcasting service as a perfect example of unnecessary government spending that could be cut to save the taxpayer money. Liberals argue that 0.012% of the federal budget dedicated to PBS is worth the benefits. Okay, so I guess big, big word is Sesame Street, and Sesame Street is on PBS. So... The liberals do not want to get rid of PBS, the conservatives do. So that's where those things are. If I build a base, uh, a political headquarters, it will reveal how we stand on other issues. So, you gotta win the states by winning the issues. Mr. Trump started in Florida. It's his home state, and uh, did he start in Florida? No, he started in Texas. That's where his base is. And he's got 49% in Texas. He's got a headquarters there. We have started in New York. New York is also important because they have a pretty sizable portion of state wealth. Other states are not as wealthy. California is probably the wealthiest. So actually, we should probably go to California first. And it does cost us about $25,000 to take a plane flight. So that that's a twenty-five thousand dollar fight, which is very expensive. But I guess you're paying for everyone in your campaign too. So in California, we want to build a headquarters. There are three types of headquarters you can build. Campaigning headquarters will increase your uh, funding by ten thousand dollars a week and reveal the top ten issues, as well as improve slightly improve awareness, which would be good. The consulting office generates political capital, which is used to hire operatives. Operatives are the key to winning the battleground states. Those are pretty important, and you need to raise political capital. Uh, the Outreach Center generates public relations clout, which is used to secure special interest groups, which does win you over a lot of voters as well. Uh, they do slightly increase awareness. Now, we have to increase awareness in one of these because of the fact that um, we're going to have to do some fundraising here. I don't think we need a campaign headquarters necessarily, but let's go ahead and get an outreach center. 
By the way, I started playing this political machine game in after the 2008 election. There is a 2008 political machine version, which is not available on Steam, but I have it as a PC game, and I played that a lot. The 2012 version, I'm not as familiar with. I got it for about four bucks on Steam, so it's not really a lot of money. Um, but it's a lot of fun to look at uh, to, if you wanna. If you're interested in seeing if you can win a presidential election, which is not necessarily easy, but there is some strategy to it. Then you know you might want to go ahead and download the game and see see if you could run for office. So Miss Clinton has bought a built-in outreach center in California. I'm gonna go ahead and send her to Florida which is going to be a battleground state. And just arriving in the state brings your opinion up slightly, or at least makes your awareness. Awareness is important right here. This, again, is going to depend, uh, factor in on how, many, how much people like you, as well as uh, how many funds you can raise. Now, Trump built a PR center here, or an outreach center here. He's raising... Uh, relations PR clout one per turn so we have to kind of keep up with him because there are certain special interest groups that you have to appease you have to win their endorsements now some of them are red states or red endorsement groups like the Christian Confederation National Foreign Policy Committee the uh, this is basically the NRA National Gun Owners Association there's the Tea Party movement in the Chamber of Commerce obviously most of these are going to probably side with Trump but I could get them, actually. Um, but it, they cost me 16 political clout, where they probably cost him 8. Depends on his credibility, too. For the Democrats, the National Association for Women, or it's normally called the National Organization of Women, the NOW, uh, there's the National Union Action Network, which would probably be similar to the AFL-CIO, National Civil Liberties Union, um, which is the ACLU. There is the National Organization for the Support of Colored People. Hmm. And then there's the Environmental Scope. So we got to make sure we win these. We don't want Trump to actually grab one of these, because that would hurt us. That would be devastating. Uh, but since we already have an outreach center here, we're raising awareness in California. We need Florida as a battleground state, so let's go ahead and build the campaign headquarters here. By the way, I'm going to try to, just because I'm saying things here in this game does not mean they're my political views, I'm going to try to be more objective in this game as far as my political statements go. I will be playing uh, another game with Trump, as Trump, and I'm going to be trying to win with him. So I'm just really just looking at strategy and tactics. And just showing you, you know, a little bit about this game, if anyone's interested. So, we just revealed a bunch of new issues in Florida. Obviously, Social Security is one of the biggest issues, because there's a lot of retired people down here. Obamacare is a big issue for this election. But it does turn off the Republican voters, if I decide to go for Obamacare. So, I don't really want to campaign on that as much. I'd like to campaign on Social Security here, because, you know, everyone kind of likes Social Security. Um, support for Israel. Wow, interesting. Reducing unemployment. Everyone loves that one, too. So these are the issues I'm probably going to campaign on. And deficit reduction. Well, do I want to solve with deficit reduction? I'm not sure. There is a total overview of how we stand on issues. And it looks like Clinton is in favor of abortion rights, Afghan withdrawal, alternative energy. We can campaign with that. Uh, arming Syrian rebels. <laughs> Auto bailouts is a big one. Let's see here. Deficit reduction. Okay, so I guess we can campaign on deficit reduction. Gay marriage is big. Fuel efficiency standards. Reducing unemployment. We can campaign on that. And there's Social Security. Good. And Obamacare, wow. So this is where we're already, how we already stand on these issues. Okay, I can move to one more state. Let's go to the other swing state, Ohio. We'll be there for the beginning of the next turn, where we can build a base. Campaign headquarters. 
Alright, Mr. Trump moving to Florida. Looks like they increased the center there, and you just built an consulting office in Ohio. I am not going to go for a consulting office here. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and build a campaign headquarters. And that will raise awareness and drum up some issues. What issues can we campaign on in Ohio? Hmm. Reducing unemployment. Auto bailouts. Deficit reduction. Those are big. Still have to work on building up our infrastructure a little bit more. Let's go ahead and move to a state we know we can win. Illinois. And here, we're going to build a consulting center to try and beef up or try to raise some political capital to hire these different operatives, which can help us out in various ways. Alright, let's move on to the next stage. Make an appearance in Michigan. That's a pretty important state. We want to make sure we win that over. We got that by 5% right now. And there's one left, so let's go ahead and move to Pennsylvania, which is another pretty big swing state. Our stamina is done. We are we have this state by four percent. And I think we look at the polls, and the polls tell us that we are dominating the Electoral College. So we are winning, you know, forty-five percent of the national vote. He's got forty-two percent. But as far as Electoral College stands, we are winning a lot more states than he is. He's yelling. <laughs> and uh, we have the lead right now. Will we maintain the lead? for the next 20, 19 weeks. Okay, he just actually, he just actually put in a newspaper ad. Wow. Going after New York there. He built a big headquarters there. Interesting. Is he challenging me in New York, really? Look at how far behind he is. Not gonna bother. I'm gonna go ahead and build another campaign headquarters here, which will increase my funding. Let's go ahead and stop by Virginia. See if we can't win this state over. Let's build an outreach center. That'll get us ahead in the political clout battle. Ooh, he's got three political PR clout moving against us here. That's not good. I'm going to go ahead and swing out to Wisconsin. I'll probably build another center there, but I'll have to wait till next turn to do it. Then I'm going to have to stop by back here and beef up this consulting office a little bit. Okay, now we have interviews that have just popped up. There's a little bonus guy that we can grab there. Oh, he's got the National Gunners. Oh, a heckler! Heckler is a wacky, outspoken, and generally obnoxious heckler has joined the ranks of Hillary Clinton's election team. Oh, so that's good. Uh, whose opponent will now have to work twice as hard in the state that the heckler is heckling in. Congrats to Hillary Clinton on this lucky find. Okay. So I can drop this guy in a state that he's going to want to move to a lot. He's going to want to go to Florida a lot. Uh, there's some issues I can campaign on in Florida. He is going to want to go into... Looks like he's going to try to go into New York. Well, he might have enough to hold himself over in New York. Let's, let's move him to Florida. Send him to Florida. And every time he goes into Florida, it's going to cost him more stamina. Okay, so. There are interviews to deal with here. Before we get to an interview, let's go ahead and swing back into Illinois, and we're going to build, upgrade the consulting office here, which should give us an advantage in operatives. We already got one operative here. If we have an advantage in operatives, then we will be ahead of him. Alright, I want to make sure I get this interview. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, do I want this interview now? It's too late, I have to go. 
Okay, so we are on 60 seconds. <laughs> Tonight, our reporters go undercover to investigate the seedy underbelly of office supply retail. Okay, I didn't get all that. Uh, what is your view on labor unions? I am for labor unions. I support them. Unions are part of the fabric of American labor force. They are the first line of defense for American workers. Let's go ahead and go for this one. That was popular. Okay. In the financial crisis of 2008, we saw the bank bailouts and later bailouts of General Motor and Chrysler with the specter of a repeat caused by Europe's financial crisis. Where do you stand? Okay. I'll stop the moral hazard. I think government intervention has introduced a serious moral hazard. Eh. <laughs> this is a tough decision, actually. Hmm. Oh, man. I think they'll like this, actually. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I didn't lose too much on that. I think I needed to do that just because the party... The Democratic Party is in uh, favor of that. Okay, Clinton makes the case to voters. Voters please showing on, pleased with the showing on 60 Seconds. Okay, so that was good. We are down in Washington for some reason. No, we're up still, but we're, it's not blue anymore. How much is the build this headquarters? It would cost us four stamina. Let's go ahead and build another outreach center here, just to keep pace with Trump. And I think that's it for this turn. All right, let's hit up Minnesota. I like to focus on these Midwest states because they're kind of a toss-up. They can go either way. We have special interests now. All right, we still can't win an endorsement, but we can hire an operative. And I like to hire these guys because you only need to hire them once. And it's good to have them because there's just a general approval. All right, so speeches. We're not ready to give speeches just yet. PR consultants. All right. Damage control. This could be good. Let's go ahead and grab this PR consultant first. All right, media bias plus ten in interview. So any the next interview we have, we're gonna have an advantage, no matter what. Basically, that's what that's saying. Okay. I'm gonna finish up this turn. I'm gonna give you guys a break from listening to me, and uh, we're gonna have another episode. So this turn, we're just gonna. Finish up, let's go to Michigan. Got to swing state, kind of. And we're going to build a headquarters there. And. I probably could build one more headquarters. Where do I want to build one? We need a vote that has. We need a state that has a lot of votes. Wisconsin. Yeah, that could be a toss up. Let's hit up a campaign headquarters there. And that's it. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. We're going to continue the campaign. It's in week five. Probably got like four or five more episodes of Hillary versus Donald in this uh, 2012 election clash.